Hi, my name is Taryn and welcome to a British Audio File and my review of the PMC 2521i loudspeakers. Now, PMC is another one of these British loudspeaker manufacturers that has a stellar reputation within the hi-fi industry and also a rock solid reputation within the pro audio industry. They've got many rich and famous clients from celebrities, musicians, they supply speakers to some of the top studios and mixing engineers in the world. I don't think it's quite so well known within the hi-fi consuming public itself and that's because they're pretty expensive. Their cheaper speaker, which is the one that I have here today, retails for £2,195 here in the UK. So let's see if it's any good. PMC 2521i is a two-way transmission line speaker, 340 millimeters high, 162 millimeters wide, and 284 millimeters deep, weighing in at 6 kgs. It's available in four finishes, diamond black, white silk, oak, and the walnut that you see here, all at a price of 2,195 pounds. The front baffle is tilted backwards slightly making it a parallelogram, that's two pairs of parallel sides, and that's to get better time phase alignment from the drivers. PMC's take on a transmission line is their advanced transmission line, ATL, and that's a tapered folded labyrinth inside the speaker. The heavy bracing provides huge cabinet rigidity. Its main function, however, is to take the back energy from the woofer, channel it down the line, Acoustic foam absorbs unwanted frequencies. The length, the position of the folds and the taper are all critical. And if done correctly, the line can be tuned more precisely and at lower frequencies than a normal ported design. The length of the line on the 2025i is designed to take advantage of the quarter wave resonance peak at 46 Hertz. The vent on the front itself is a little bit interesting. It's what PMC term their laminar technology. The lowest frequencies from the transmission line are outputted from the vent and it has a unique geometry with those fins on the front and that's to reduce air turbulence. It's derived from principles used in F1 racing. I suppose it helps when your chief engineer used to be an F1 racing engineer. The rear has a non-magnetic stainless steel back plate PMC tested a whole bunch of materials and they found that the non-metallic stainless steel worked better than MDF. There's excellent quality solid copper rhodium plated speaker binding posts. There's only two of them. I quite frankly would rather have two really good quality ones than four poor quality ones. But for some people where they want to buy amp or buy wire, that isn't an option on this speaker. The tweeter is new on this new i model as opposed to the non-i version that preceded it, and it's derived from the more expensive FAT range. It was co-engineered with SIAS of Norway, a well-regarded drive unit manufacturer, and it's permitted PMC to lower the crossover point from 1.8 kHz on the non-i model to 1.7 kHz, which is what we have here. Essentially, the woofer is able to get out of uh, producing frequencies before it narrows its dispersion and this improves the off-axis response. Behind that 34 millimeter grill, what you can't see is a 19 millimeter soft dome tweeter made from a material known as Sonomex. 19 millimeters is less than what you'd ordinarily get. I think 25 millimeters or in and around that is considered the industry standard. What that smaller tweeter does is give it a wider dispersion characteristic higher up the frequency range and that helps with off-axis performance. Now ordinarily with a smaller tweeter you'd expect lower power handling and it not to go down as low in terms of the crossover point but that clearly isn't the case here and what you can't see behind that 34 millimeter grill is a dispersion plate surrounded around the tweeter and that's made from glass fiber composite. It has a very low resonance and it aids dispersion, but also gives the tweeter a boost in power handling and the low end frequency response it requires. The woofer is identical to the previous non-I model. It's a five and a half inch or 140 millimeter wide mid-base cone. 
designed by PMC themselves to work with the transmission line base loading manufactured for them by an OEM. It's a glass fiber weaved cone and it's been chosen because of its low coloration and long excursion. And for additional strength and stiffness, it has a cast alloy chassis. The PMC 2521i is all about speed and resolution. It's got a tonal balance that's on the slightly cool side. What would you describe as less than cool? Should have paid more attention in English class and widened my vocabulary. Uh, fresh, crisp, let's go with crisp. It's on the crisp side of neutral. And the way it projects sound is slightly forward. So let's break this down. The bass on this little speaker has exceptional speed and clarity. Now compared to my ProAct Response 1 SCs that are a similar price, there's no comparison in the lower frequencies. The ProAx seems slower and lumpier in comparison. There's something about a transmission line design speaker when it's done right. And I don't know why more manufacturers don't go down this route. Well, I do really, I'll answer my own question. It's complicated in terms of its mathematical modeling. It's not particularly well understood. It's complicated to build and slightly more expensive to build. And there just isn't enough understanding out there. But, oh, what a base delivery these PMCs do. It's not the last word in terms of extension and dynamics. It's a small bookshelf speaker. You have to be realistic. It goes down to 46 hertz. If you want full range sound, you will need to add a subwoofer. In terms of mid-range performance, the PMCs have an excellent transient response. It doesn't matter what you throw at it, whatever instrument, Whichever vocal, the leading edges of notes are extremely clean and well-defined, even more so than my Proact Response 1 SCs. And that's saying something because the Proacts are pretty good in that regard. When it comes to the actual body, what I think mixing engineers refer to as the release of the note, the PMCs have a slightly lean character. I'd describe them as a little bit trim. In comparison, the Proacts are fuller, warmer, richer, with more texture. Both speakers do really well when it comes to the decay structures on notes. The PMCs have a very short decay. It's a little bit longer on the Proax. Now it's this short decay, slight leanness in the body and the excellent transient response on the PMCs that gives them their very fast and clean sounding presentation. And that makes them really suitable for where there's an awful lot going on, where there's a lot of transient peaks so big orchestral works or rock music, but where you want a little bit more warmth, a little bit more body, a little bit more chestiness perhaps in a vocal, soul music, blues music, perhaps jazz instruments, where you want a bit more texture as well, the PMCs do have a slightly lean characteristic. The upper mid range is always a key area of performance in my book because it's associated with hard and harsh sounds. And if it's not kept in check, it will contribute to listening fatigue pretty quickly. I'm pleased to report that with these PMC speakers, everything's controlled and very well refined, but they are quite revealing in this area. So if you pick up a little bit of hardness or harshness when you hook up these speakers, it's not these speakers that are responsible. It's something further up the food chain. So you may want to check that out. And it's a similar story when it comes to the high frequencies. There's good refinement very nice extension. There's an openness and airiness to the treble that you'd associate with a good wide dispersion tweeter. And that's what you have here. I did notice a touch of prominence when it came to playing hi-hats, for example, and it's nothing to complain about. They're just a little bit more prominent than what I would consider ultimately neutral, but the sibilance is very well controlled. Soundstage left to right was very good, extended way beyond these speakers these PMCs do a pretty good job of disappearing. And there's a remarkably good soundstage height, something that a lot of speakers struggle with. As long as it's there in the recording, you can clearly tell if a performer is sitting higher than another performer. What I did struggle with though, was soundstage depth. Now this is something that isn't normally associated with PMC speakers, so I spoke to them about it. And based on their advice, I played around with speaker positioning, and that helped a bit. I had the speakers even further out in the room than would ordinarily be the case, around 1.2 meters, circa four feet. But I generally found that the sound was presented flat with the plane of the speakers and forward, 
and not so much behind. I'm here to report what I find and what I hear. So I will say this, I struggle to achieve soundstage depth with these particular speakers in my room. In terms of imaging, well that was crystal clear and sharp. You can clearly tell within that soundstage where instruments are located. The PMC 2521Is are fairly easy to drive. They have an 86.5 dB sensitivity, which is moderate, and an 8 ohm impedance load. But I wouldn't expect any unusual dips in their impedance plot. I would imagine it's fairly benign because I was able to drive these off the Audiolab 6000A amplifier that I had in for review. That's a 50 watt per channel amplifier, and it drove them fine. Of course, you'd expect my Hegel H160 with its 150 watts and my exposure pre and mono blocks to drive these speakers fine, and they did. Now, as good as the Audiolab 6000A is, I think in order to get the best out of these speakers, you would want an amplifier with better control, a little bit more refinement and resolution than that. The Hegel H160 has all of that in abundance, and the combination made a very clean, very fast sound, but the slightly dry, lean character of the Hegel H160 meant that musically I found them a little bit uninvolving. Now, when I hooked up the PMC 2521Is to my exposure pre-monos, that's where things really got interesting. The exposures are a bigger, fuller, richer sounding amp with a lot more body texture and tonality in the mid-range and that really did make a very nice combination with the PMC 2521Is. Now these are a revealing speaker. They're going to be quite demanding of the quality of amplification and source equipment that you place with them. They're also not a simple plunk and play solution. Revealing speakers at this price point seldomly are, but these are particular about how they need to be positioned. And if you don't have the flexibility of playing with the position of the speaker or your position relative to the speaker, you're probably better off looking at something else. I eventually wound up with them 1.2 meters away from the wall behind them. That's measuring from the front baffle, two meters apart with minimal toe in. They were sat on 60 centimeter, that's two feet stands, raked slightly upwards to increase the soundstage height. You may well wind up with a similar position, but depending on your room, it may well be different. The PMC 2521i is a highly resolving speaker. That's a virtue of its speed and lack of distortion. The quality of bass offered by this transmission line design is quite frankly exceptional. Now there's people out there that are gonna want a full range sound and they'll want to add a subwoofer or two and if you're listening in large rooms, you're better advised looking at the floor stander. But there's something special about the clarity and speed of bass offered by a transmission line design if done right, and that's certainly the case here. The overall tonality of the speaker is slightly on the cool side. How did I describe it? I think the word I used is crisp. It's a new one for the audiophile lexicon. This is a slightly crisp sounding speaker, and it throws sound more forwards than it does backwards of the speaker plane, giving a slightly more intimate listening experience. If that's what you're looking for, I doubt for this money, around circa 2,200 pounds, you're likely to find better. This speaker is going to be quite demanding of partnering equipment. Now that isn't a criticism, far from it. Good quality speakers demand good quality amplification and source components. Make sure you choose something that has the speed, resolution, and refinement to keep up with these speakers and you're fine. Ideally, you want something with a little bit of warmth and tonal richness to balance out the sound as well. Now that combination isn't gonna come cheap. It's not a plonk and play solution either. Again, this is not a criticism. Good quality speakers need a little bit of space and flexibility with regards to positioning. If you don't have the flexibility, to move these speakers around and move your position to them, there are going to be presentation styles that are going to be a little bit more forgiving than the 21 eyes. That isn't the main reason why it's not getting an outstanding from this channel. It's getting a highly recommended. 
and the reason is primarily because of the tonality. It has a tonal balance that's going to appeal to some people but not appeal to others. Some will love the clarity and precision, others will crave something with a bit more warmth and tonal richness. Right, so I think that pretty much wraps things up for my review of the PMC 2521Is. Hopefully you've liked this review. If you have, please hit that like button, please share it. And for those of you who like what I do with this channel but haven't subscribed as yet, please consider subscribing. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.